I'm the Mythology Guy, and today we're going to do a double video discussion, because I went out and did a double feature with Wilda. We went and we saw the Uncharted movie, and we saw The Lost City, the movie with Sandra Bullock and Brad Pitt and Channing Tatum. <clears throat> Uh, I decided to do these both in one video because these are movies with very similar premises. They're both like comedic Indiana Jones style movies. And so the way this video is going to work is I'm going to compare the two a little, then I'm just going to talk about Uncharted, first with no spoilers, then with spoilers, then I'm going to talk about The Lost City. That's how this will work. So first let's compare the two a little. Uh, the better movie out of these two is definitely The Lost City. And that's very amazing because you know all the marketing was to Uncharted. Uncharted was supposed to be Sony's big blockbuster. And The Lost City just like looks like another like silly little uh, comedic film. But um, The Lost City is incredibly funny. I was laughing almost the entire movie. Had a great time. It's well acted. It's so much fun. Uncharted is trying to do, like, is trying to be funny, but it's not nearly as funny as The Lost City, and uh, the characters are not nearly as good, which is amazing, because Uncharted is a series where the characters are very important, and it's really interesting to see just what looked like some run-of-the-mill comedy film do characters so much better than Uncharted did. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, go see The Lost City. You really should. It, it only came out like a few days ago, I think. Uh, I know it's late to be talking about Uncharted right now, but I wasn't motivated to see it in theaters. And after seeing it, yeah, my, uh, my thoughts on it were valid, honestly. But The Lost City is great. You should go see it not alone. You should maybe go see it like with friends or, you know, if you have a date and you need a movie to take your date to, take your date to The Lost City. I think it would make a really great date movie, honestly. So yeah, that's what I think of the two films. Okay, let's just talk about Uncharted now. Now, this movie, and before I start talking about it, let me establish, I love the Uncharted series. I absolutely love the entire Uncharted franchise. I, I, I also have Lost Legacy, but that was digital only when I bought it. So, yeah, like... <clears throat> oh, I also, somewhere in here, I have the PS Vita game also. Like, Uncharted is one of my favorite franchises. It's so good. It... It's got great characters, it's got great comedy, it's got great story and all of that. And this movie does, the comedy is okay, I would say okay, because there are some jokes that legit really made me laugh, but then there are some jokes that I just didn't care about. The story is meh, I'll, I'll just say meh, and the characters aren't very good. Um... This movie is very disappointing to an Uncharted fan. If you're just a casual moviegoer and you don't even give a shit about Uncharted, like the game franchise, I still think you'll just think this is a meh movie, honestly. Because I went and saw it with Wilden, she thought it was just a meh movie, and I thought it was a meh and also disappointing. Yeah, I can't even call it disappointing because I went in expecting nothing. Ever since the casting call, I was like, no, no, absolutely not. And no hate to Tom Holland. Tom Holland is a great guy. He's a great actor. And you can tell he's trying. I'm sure he's trying. God bless him in this movie. I saw some behind the scenes stuff. I know he worked really hard to try to make this work. And he's probably doing the best job out of everybody, even though he's nothing like Nathan Drake. I mean, does Tom Holland... Uh, yeah, you can't see it. But whatever. Uh, anyone who knows Nathan Drake knows Tom Holland looks absolutely nothing like him. Now, they are establishing it's a younger Nathan Drake, but that's not what fans want to see. We don't want to see little kid Nathan Drake. We want to see, you know, Nathan Drake in his prime, you know? And also, Mark Wahlberg has sully God talk about things that don't work. I actually think that was a worse casting choice than Tom Holland as Nathan Drake. And again, no hate to Mark Wahlberg. I actually really love Mark Wahlberg, but no, he's not a good choice for Sully. Sully is my favorite character in the games, and to see him, like Mark Wahlberg just 
I don't see Sully at all when I see Mark Wahlberg. I don't see Nathan Drake at all when I look at Tom Holland in this film. It, it, it really just doesn't work. This feels like it could have just been a completely separate franchise. And I know what some people are thinking like, oh, well, you know, don't judge it based on the games. Just look at it as its own thing. No, I won't look at it as its own thing. You know why? Because the name Uncharted is on there. If we were supposed to look at it as its own thing, this movie would have just been its own thing. They put the Uncharted name on there which means they wanted uncharted fans to come see it they were trying to cash in on the name if you're going to try to cash in on a name then you can at least do the franchise properly instead of doing it like honestly like come on we all know the reason they cast tom holland because tom holland is hot right now you know he's super popular all over the goddamn place everybody wants a piece of tom holland in one of their movies and Mark Wahlberg's there because he's Mark Wahlberg. Because they wanted, they were like, all right, we have to get Tom Holland in this movie, so we'll make Nathan Drake younger, which means we have to make Sully younger too. Mark Wahlberg can do it, right? I mean, this isn't what people want to see. Uh, they have Chloe in this movie, and the girl playing Chloe is fine, honestly. Uh, she she kind of she looks like Chloe. I guess that's fine, but Chloe's character is not done well, and I'll get into that in spoilers. But yeah. Um, Overall, uh, the action in this movie is decent, but there's not a ton of it. The story in this movie is meh, and there's some problems with it, which I'll get into in spoilers. And the characters in this movie, I overall was not happy with. The characters make some really dumb decisions in this movie. And some of the, one of my one character who I absolutely love, they kind of turned into a huge asshole, which I hate. And yeah, they made some really ridiculous changes. Overall, I would give this movie a 5 out of 10. I would say this is an average movie. Now, um, and yeah, that's really sad to say, because these games, these games are like 9s or 10s, like right here. And, and to produce just a 5 out of 10 movie is kind of amazing. But, you know, I guess it's always hard to adapt a game into a movie. It's never going to be as good. A movie is never going to be as good as a game because a game, you're playing it and it's obviously going to be longer than a movie. You're always going to have a better time playing a video game than watching a movie, like, you know, in this kind of scenario. So, yeah, I I know it's at a disadvantage because of that, but... Um, but still you know it's still even if i put the games aside i would still give this movie a five out of ten six at the absolute highest is what i would say so yeah that's what i think of the uncharted movie and now i'm gonna get into spoilers for the uncharted movie i got a whole bunch of notes here of dumb shit that was in the film uh so okay spoiler warning three two one poof, spoilers all right, the movie literally opens up on that stupid uh, cliche I can't stand. That whole starting late into the film, and then I bet you're wondering how I got here. That stupid crap, it jumps all over the damn place. It starts in the middle of the plane scene that you've seen in the trailer and you know from Uncharted 3. For no reason. Literally no reason. There was no reason to do that. Shouldn't have done that. Then they cut back, oh, uh, 15 years earlier to when he's a little kid. And then later they cut again to, oh, present day, except earlier than the plane scene. It's like, this all happens within like 10 minutes. It's stupid. I hate that kind of dumb shit. You could have, it's fine to start him as a little kid and then move up to present day. But you don't have to start in the m fucking middle of the movie and then move back to the prequel part and then move to the present part. That that's stupid as hell. I hate that crap. I hate that flash forward opening garbage. So yeah, then it flashes back to him when he's a little kid and he's with his brother. You know, they're establishing that early on. That thing that didn't come in until the fourth game. But I guess it's fine to establish that early on. There's a silly scene where his brother is holding up a lighter right next to an ancient priceless painting. He's holding the lighter like this far away from him. I'm like, dude, back up. You're gonna fucking set that thing on fire. You idiot, you're gonna damage it. Yeah, um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, he's with his brother. They get caught by the police. His brother, like, has to run off to avoid getting arrested. And before he runs off, they make a change with the ring of Sir Francis Drake, which I actually, I this was actually a good change in my opinion. So his brother, instead of Nathan stealing the ring when he's a little kid, um, his brother has the ring. And in this movie, his brother says, hey, bro, 
you you see I never let this ring out of my sight I never let go of this ring and then he takes it off it like because he's wearing it like a necklace takes it off and he puts it on Nathan around Nathan's neck he says see now you know you'll see me again because you know I'll come back for that ring and he runs off and I'm like okay that's actually a wholesome nice little thing that's that's cute that's a nice little brotherly moment and I'm okay with that then it flashes forward to modern day and you know the little kid Nathan Drake turns into Tom Holland Nathan Drake he looks about the same age. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> but, yeah, um, so yeah, uh, then, you know, Tom Holland, you know, he works in a bar, he steals a diamond bracelet from a completely innocent girl who's just there to get a drink. Like, she's not a jerk or anything, she's, like, that. he establishes, I guess, Tom just goes, yeah, well, I guess you're just spending daddy's money, and then he steals her bracelet. And it's, look, it's not, a, it's well shot the way he steals it, it's cool to see what a good thief he is, but also, why is he such an asshole? Like, really, this is what I'm talking about, about ruining the characters. Why is he stealing that from her? I guess just to get by, but that's, like, what, what did she do to you, you dick? Like, that's just mean. And I know some people justify that shit by saying, oh, well, you know, that's a rich person. You can steal from them. They can afford to lose it. Okay, first of all, no, that's that's theft either way. Like, it's, it, unless, like, if the person was a total dick, I could kind of see your justification there. But also, you don't know what you're stealing. That bracelet could be a family memento. That could have been passed down three generations. That could have been a gift from a, someone who's now passed away. You don't know what you're taking, you fucking dick. Like, why would you take that? Like... Like, so, yeah, in my opinion, that made Nathan pretty unlikable that he just does that. And then he runs into Sully, who steals the bracelet from him. And at first I thought Sully was going to give the bracelet back to the girl and it would be part of his lesson to Nathan Drake. Like, hey, buddy, look, like, you, you should use those skills for something better, not just to steal. But no, Sully keeps it. He doesn't give it back. So Sully's an asshole, too. <laughs> like, and Sully in the games is not like that. Sully's a really good guy in the games. <laughs> Also, Sully has no mustache, because I guess we don't care about the gifts. Now, he later gets a mustache in an after credit scene, which is just a nothing mustache. I, you know, I honestly hate when they don't give a character something that's important to that character, and then just tease it in, like, an after credit scene or some dumb shit and say, There, we got it. No, 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 no. The movie's over. It's too late. Okay, you dumbass. <clears throat> They have a little Naughty Dog Easter egg in Nathan's apartment, which is kind of funny. Also, Nathan somehow lives in a huge apartment all by himself in the middle of the city, because I guess he can afford that. Um, I guess he's stolen a whole lot of precious family heirlooms from innocent people. <laughs> you know, in the games, Nathan was living on the streets when he met Sully, but that's not the case here. So, yeah, um... So, yeah, Sully and Nathan, you know, they go on their adventure together and they try to steal, like, they're trying to find some ancient, like, treasure from a ship. And, um, <clears throat> on, Sully is, like, a total dick because very early on in their adventure, like, Nathan Drake gets cap almost captured and instead of helping him Sully starts to walk and just starts ditching him he's like oh, Sully where are you going and he's like hey man don't get caught and he just leaves again Sully from the games would never do this but uh, Sully in the movie is such a piece of shit in fact one of the villains is one of Sully's former apprentices and apparently he ditched her too and we also find out later that Nathan's brother is apparently apparent allegedly dead because he was Sully's partner, and he and Sully, like, got got into trouble, and, like, Nathan's brother got shot, and instead of helping him in any way, Sully just ditches him and leaves him for dead. And later when Nathan confronts Sully about it, Sully doesn't even say, look, I didn't know what to do, or anything. He just says, look, I saw an out and I took it. What else would I do? What the fuck? You've completely butchered Sully's character. This is not Sully. You ruined my favorite character. Sully is such an asshole piece of shit in this movie i hate it i hate what they did to sully in this film oh and you know what's kind of funny one thing i found kind of funny when nathan gets into a fight with that scottish guy you might remember it from the trailer he goes proper scottish welcome and then he just goes what and, and that's kind of a funny scene in the trailer but in the movie they make it's weird instead of saying what he goes i'm sorry and that's not as funny it's not as it doesn't work as well. I don't know why in the world they changed that. Like, they literally made it worse. It's so strange. It's so incredibly strange. 
Another character they completely ruined is Chloe. I talked about that in non-spoilers. I'm going to go into it more. Um, Chloe... So, they ruined Chloe's father. Like, her backstory is, like, she found, like, an ancient artifact. Her father stole it from her, sold it, took all the money, and abandoned her. And that was the last I ever saw him. And now I don't trust anyone at all anymore. What a slap in the face to Chloe and her father from the games. If you've played Uncharted The Lost Legacy, you know Chloe's father is basically her hero. And she wants to finish his work. And, like how much he loved her and he literally like found like this ancient like site and brought back a little thing from it just to give it to his daughter that's the kind of guy her father is in the games and here he's a dirtbag deadbeat thief who steals from his own child and abandons her this is not the same kind of father and chloe in the games is a good character like i really like her and apparently a lot of other people did since she got her own spinoff game and in this movie, she's dumb, she's a bitch, she's a traitor all the goddamn time. Like, literally, there's a scene where they think they found the treasure, but it turns out it wasn't the treasure. It turns out the treasure's somewhere else. And she picks this moment to betray Nathan and be like, no, I'm not going to get screwed again. I'm getting that treasure myself. Wait a minute. Even if you're going to betray him, why would you betray him now? Why wouldn't you do it when you have the treasure? I mean, you know the treasure's not here. You know it's somewhere else. This is the weirdest time to turn on someone. It makes absolutely no sense. It's like if you're infiltrating the Secret Service to try to kill the president, and in the second round of training from the Secret Service, that's when you pull your gun on your superior officer and go, I'm going to kill the president, even though the president is a thousand miles away from here. What kind of stupid ass moron is Chloe supposed to be? And, you know, this is, by the way, this is the second time she's betrayed them in the movie. When she first met them, she literally tries to steal from them and run away. Then later in the film, the people she's actually working for betray her. And then Nathan, oh, no, wait, actually, sorry, I missed a thing. This, she, this her pointing the gun at Drake, this is after Drake just saved her life, by the way. He literally just saved her life when she was drowning. He didn't have to. He goes back for her, he pulls her out of there, and he saves her. And she's, and now, literal minutes later, she's pointing a gun at him and going, I know you're gonna screw me. I know you're gonna turn on me. You moron! What are you doing? And then... Honestly, and then yeah, so later in the film, the people she's actually working for do turn on her and try to kill her, and she has to run away, and Nathan runs runs with her and tries to help her, and then, like, you know, they're talking, and she goes, hey, come on, you were just as ready to screw me as they were. You fucking idiot! He saved your life twice, and these people were just trying to kill you! What the fuck are you talking about? This is the stupidest, stupidest way you could have written Chloe. And then after all that, she tries to betray him again later in the film and I, Wilde and I were just done at that point we were like oh fuck you <laughs> like you suck yeah absolutely ruined Chloe oh god oh and there's a weird scene when they find the fake out treasure where they bump into one pot out of three huge ones they bump into one of the pots and then all three shatter I don't get how that works physics wise that's really really weird Oh, and you know what else is weird? In the opening of the film, Nathan's asleep, and then he wakes up in the sky, like, with the plane and stuff. But then later in the film, when he gets knocked in that same position, there's never a part where he passes out. So, I don't know if that's a continuity error, or if he just passed out for, like, five seconds and we missed it later. It's stupid. Oh, God, what else we got here? Da -da 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 -da. Eh, Chloe ruined... Oh! There's this scene where... So... When they're looking for the treasure and it turns out to be the fake out treasure, they're going through these ancient churches, ancient puzzles, ancient passageways. And at one point they're going through one of these ancient 500 year old passageways and they fall into a club <laughs> that's still being used and inhabited by people. And music's playing and the bad guys are there too. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? <laughs> It's so stupid. I thought we were going through ancient passageways, but no, apparently there was a modern day club right the fuck there. If humanity has discovered all this stuff, I'm amazed they haven't discovered those passageways like they're still sealed and untouched and everything. How did you get a club in the middle of the passageways, but the earlier part and the later part of the passageway is still perfectly preserved? It's stupid. It's so fucking stupid. 
And what's amazing is there's a million like different puzzles and passageways and mysteries leading to the fake out treasure that isn't even there. Like they have to get, they have to have the keys and the puzzles and figure everything out to get to an area where there isn't even treasure. But then where the actual treasure is, there's no puzzles at all. No puzzles, no passageways, no nothing. It's right out in the goddamn open. Like, there's literally open area of sunlight pouring down on where the actual treasure is. And, like, a very easy way in. Nobody found this over all of these years. Anybody could go in and find this. This is so, so badly written. It's horrible. It's so dumb. Oh, um, so there's two villains in this film. There's Antonio Banderas, and then there's this woman whose name I can't remember. I'm sorry. And uh, they build up Antonio Banderas so much, and it's it's interesting how his story is going. And then uh, the other villain who's working for him, she just kills him because... I don't know. They just completely waste Antonio Banderas and she slits his throat open and there's absolutely no blood because the movie's rated PG-13. <laughs> Oh, and at one point, you know, after the plane scene, Sully literally just disappears. Like, you know, Nathan and Sully were working together at this point. Sully jumps off the plane with the map. He doesn't abandon Nathan, by the way. He says, come on, Nathan, we gotta go. And he goes off the side. And I guess he was down there waiting for Nathan and Nathan just ditched him we know nathan still has his phone because later on sully's been tracking it somehow nathan's phone is incredibly waterproof and his earpiece is also incredibly waterproof because he's gone underwater like four times and his phone is still working well enough to still be tracked by sully's phone which i guess is also waterproof <laughs> sully tracked nathan's phone hundreds of i don't i don't know i don't know how this phone tracking stuff works i never use it Oh, God. Oh, also in the plane scene, apparently things fall at completely different speeds, which, as we all know, breaks, like, the law of gravity. Nathan smashes his head against a crate while he's falling down and somehow doesn't immediately die. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. Oh, God. Um... There is a, there is a, the best scene in the movie, though, is after the plane scene, they wash up on a beach, and Nolan North is there on the beach. And they're like, hey, what happened to you guys? And they're like, oh, we fell out of plane. He goes, oh, that happened to me once. I was like, oh, there you go. That's the best scene in the movie. That's the kind of fan service I'm looking for. So that was, that was good. I, I did like that. Okay, okay. Um, so yeah, and when they do find the real treasure... Um, it's aboard two ships, and so the bad guys call in the strongest helicopters on the face of the Earth to lift these ancient galeons out of the fucking, uh, treasure area. And we get a really cool action scene of, like, Nathan and Sully on one ship and the bad guys on the other ship as the ships are flying and basically fighting each other. And, like, you know what? Creative. Really cool. Wasn't in the games. I knew it was coming, though, because it was in the trailer. But still, really cool. Though it, I still would have really liked if, if the movie had, like, a supernatural twist like the games do. I think that's such a staple of the franchise is the big supernatural twist. But there's no twist at all in this movie. And I'm not counting the whole one villain killed the other or Chloe betrays them seven times as twists. Those aren't fucking twists. That's nothing. It's literally nothing. So yeah, obviously uh, Nathan and Sully end up getting the treasure. Chloe ends up getting nothing because she's a goddamn idiot. I guess Nathan just forgives Sully for leaving his brother for dead because granted Sully does save his life at one point, but it's like it wouldn't have been necessary if you weren't such an asshole in the first place. Then there's this after credit scene, where which I think is built, building up the plot to the first game with the Nazi map and stuff. Um, and there's a scene where a whole bar has their guns pointed at Nathan Drake, but then Sully walks in with a gun and the whole bar puts their guns down. Sully's one guy. Why are you all putting your gun? What the hell is going on? That's so dumb. And then it literally has an idiotic cliffhanger ending. Like, it literally, I swear to God, like, Sully and Drake run out of the bar where all the guys with guns were, and then suddenly they just look at the camera, oh, no! And then credits. Fuck off, movie. <laughs> I know there's gonna be a sequel, but I'm sure it's gonna be fucking lame. 
So yeah, overall, those are my thoughts on the Uncharted movie. It's uh, it's lame. It's really lame. But some of the jokes made me laugh. There is a there's actually the joke that made me laugh the hardest, and that's because I relate to this in real life. Is when Ethan's like, "All right, Sully, give me your phone." He gives him the phone. He's like, "Oh my God, you have so many apps open. What's wrong with you?" <laughs> that's me to like my to my friends and my mom. <laughs> like, why why do you have all these apps open? So yeah, that was relatable and kind of funny. So yeah, some of the jokes were good, some of the action's fun, but uh, characters suck, story is meh. So yeah, that's it. That's why I gave the movie a 5 out of 10 overall. Okay, let's talk about The Lost City now. Now, The Lost City is a movie where the plot is that Sandra Bullock writes romantic adventure stories, and she's been kidnapped by Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> which is great, um, because apparently Sandra is actually smart enough to figure out where an actual lost artifact is, and Daniel Radcliffe wants it. And, uh, and Channing Tatum, the cover model from her books, goes out to save her, because this isn't a spoiler, it's beyond obvious, he's in love with her. <laughs> it's so beyond obvious. And he recruits Brad Pitt to go along and help him. And the movie is so goddamn funny. It's so goddamn... I forget how funny Sandra Bullock can be. Because, uh, you know, Sandra Bullock does a lot of serious roles and stuff like Gravity and stuff. But I forget, Sandra Bullock is actually really goddamn funny. Like, I, you know, I forget about stuff like Miss Congeniality, where she knew how to play a funny yet lovable and relatable character. And she does that here, honestly. The characters in this movie all feel so, like, real and feel so, like, like you'd want to be friends with them in real life. Channing Tatum's character I thought was going to be a total douchebag out of his element, but he's actually, like, the most wholesome guy ever. You really want him to get what he wants. You really want him to get together with Sandra Bullock because you can see how much he likes her and how much he cares about her. It's so sweet. It's so wholesome. It's wonderful. Even... Um, Sandra Bullock's publicist is a really likable character. It's, it's amazing. And Daniel Radcliffe is such a fun, funny villain. Like, and, and come on, you saw the trailer, or you see the first ten minutes of this movie, you know Daniel Radcliffe is the villain. But yeah, this movie had me laughing at so many points. Now, the last third is where I think the comedy dropped off a little, but I think that's to be expected in a movie like this, because that's where, you know, we, okay, we got to make the plot happen a little more now so that we can wrap the movie up. Um, but even that, there's still some funny moments, and yeah, God, and... Like, I, I didn't really care that much about what they were looking for or anything, but I really cared about the characters, and I was really enjoying the comedy. So yeah, this is... There's really not much else to say. This is a really fun, really funny movie with really lovable characters. I feel like, you know, Uncharted could learn a lot from this film, to be honest. <laughs> So yeah, if I had to pick a rating for The Lost City, again, I'm between a 7 and an 8, because 7 means good, 8 means great. It's hard to say, but you know, the, the characters are great, and the comedy is great, so I'll give this movie an 8. I'm going to give The Lost City an 8. Great. You should go see it. You really should. If you're just looking for like a fun, casual day at the movies, The Lost City is the movie to go see. I really hope this movie gets more attention because when I went to go see it with Wilda and it, it's been out less than a week, there weren't, there was like almost nobody in the theater and it made me feel a little bad for the film. Um, so yeah, you know, if, if you want to show this movie some love, it deserves it. All right, let's, uh, let's go into spoilers now. Three, two, one, spoilers for The Lost City. Okay, um, <clears throat> there's really not much else to say in spoilers, but there, uh, like, I guess I'll just talk about some of the nice, wholesome scenes. Like, um, there, it's established early on that Sandra Bullock really likes cheese, but Channing Tatum is not there for that scene where that's established. And then later in the movie, when he comes to save her, he says, oh, I brought you some cheese. And that's a tiny little thing that if you pick up on, you realize, 
oh, that means he really pays attention to what she's into. Because, you know, we know he didn't learn that in the events of this movie. He must have learned that earlier on. And that's really wholesome. <laughs> like, because, you know, he likes her and he cares about her. There's also a really subtle scene. He's like, man, I don't know how to talk to her. You know, I just say stupid... I was saying stupid stuff and it's hard to keep up with her because every time she comes, she starts talking, it's just this beautiful knowledge that comes out of her mouth. And it's like, uh-huh, did you pick up on that? He's, he, he loves the, the, and what a thing to be attracted to, by the way. He's really attracted to her personality and her knowledge. Like that's, <laughs> honestly, it's really, it's really sweet and it's really wholesome. And it's also really f funny, the journey her publicist has to go. Her publicist basically has to have a planes, trains, and automobiles journey to get to her, which is also really fun. And yeah, really, really just, just great characters all around. And yeah, Sandra Bullock, e here's the thing, even Sandra Bullock's character is supposed to be a little, it, it's interesting, she's actually the one in the wrong, and Channing Tatum, her cover model, has to help her realize that she's in the wrong. I don't, I, I'm interested, I, I like seeing that in a movie once in a while, because nowadays a lot of movies, like, would just have, like, a guy be wrong, and the woman, like, tell him what to do, and they're, and that's fine, but it's nice to see that balanced out with the other thing happening once in a while. Because, again, I thought we were just going to paint Channing Tatum as a total douchebag who doesn't know what he's doing. But Channing Tatum is the best character in the film. <clears throat> and Yeah, so, uh, yeah, Sandra Bullock's like, oh, man, I'm so sick and tired of just writing schlock that doesn't accomplish anything. And Channing, and, you know, just, you know, having some, you know, handsome guy like you who gets to have it all, all of his life, you know. Your life is so easy, you don't get it. And Channing Tatum actually talks to her and he says look um like i don't remember their character names in the movie but uh look sandra um honestly i started modeling just to pay the bills and i was really embarrassed by it and i was really embarrassed to be on the cover of a romance book because i i thought it was such a tacky thing to be doing but then i ran into a fan in real life and she was so happy to see me and she apparently the books had made her so happy and i thought how can i be embarrassed by something that would make this woman so happy don't disrespect your fans by calling it schlock because it means something to them and your fans deserve more respect and i was like yes that is such a great way to put it as someone who creates content myself and has met a couple of fans out in public I really can't describe what a good feeling that is and yeah like you know there have been times when I've been unsure about my own content but you know then I see how much you guys like it and it really makes me feel like you know I did something good by putting that content out there and so, yeah, I feel like this movie really, like, or, well, Channing Tatum's character really put that into good perspective. Brad Pitt's character is also a lot of fun. We get all the best action from ba Brad Pitt's character, but he sadly dies pretty early on. Um, he gets shot in the goddamn head. Then there's an after credit scene where he's still alive, and they're like, wait, we saw you get shot in the head. Your brains were on my face. He goes, well, we only used 10% of our brains, so I started using a different 10%. That's the kind of movie this is you're not supposed to take it seriously um there's a betrayal you can see coming a mile away where daniel radcliffe's like yeah what you yeah, we've been digging up this lost city of course one of my henchmen you see that guy right over there he doesn't like that we're doing that there was no reason for me to mention this except to set up that he's going to turn on me later but uh, you know there see right over there bob right there with the with the blue shirt he he's not happy about what we're doing right now <laughs> it's so beyond obvious <clears throat> but yeah like it's still a lot of really great funny comedy and you know i don't want to give away anymore because i want you to just watch the film and enjoy the funny jokes honestly um so yeah that's that's i guess all i have to say about this film and that's all i have to say about uncharted out of the two movies obviously the lost city is the better movie i had a lot to say about uncharted but it was a lot of mean things to say when you just like a movie it's hard to say as much about it because you're just happy especially when you want people to go and see it so yeah that's all i have to say about these two films 
Um, uh, Uncharted gets a 5 out of 10. The Lost City gets an 8 out of 10. It's obvious which one I liked more. Um, but yeah, did you see Uncharted? Do you feel the same way I did? Did you see The Lost City? Do you feel the same way I did? Do you, have you seen both? And do you have a preference of the two? I mean, what do you honestly think? Are, did you play the Uncharted games? Like, I, I'd really like to hear what you thought of the movie if you played the games like I did. Um, so yeah, that's really all I have to say. I'm the mythology guy. Those were sort of myth-related movies. Ancient cultures. It counts. Um, I will see you next time. Bye-bye.